Hi everyone, welcome back from the coffee break. Um, I'm going to speak a little bit about the Sprint head. It looks exactly the same like the previous one. It's more or less like the iPhones of today. They look exactly the same. iPhone 13, 14 doesn't make a big difference. But what's changing is what's inside it. So a little bit about that. And I'm not going to speak about AI. So it's more about people and how people speak to the market and find out what's needed and then work on that. So Albert Einstein, respect him quite a lot. That's why I live and work in Germany. Um, the important thing is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. After we sell our print heads to machine manufacturers, machine manufacturers sell these print printers in the field. We go out there, we find out what's troubling them, how things can be changed, how we can optimize it. And we do that not with AI, we do it in person. We go there and we speak to them. That's how we tend to work. So. Um, Previously, we had the printhead, which was RC1536. And now we just put an H in it. Uh, this is nothing special um, in the way the printhead looks. Whatever we have done is, is all inside it. It's clearly mentioned there. So the things that have changed is a metal nozzle plate. There is a drop density variation, which we have improved. And last but not the least, um, the compatibility of fluids. So all ink manufacturers here can be a little more happier. Our print heads will work with more uh, inks from now on. So let's go um, one by one. Try to use a little bit of morphing here. Um, so shear mode print heads, there are four in the market. None of them have a metal nozzle plate until now. So we are the first one in the market to bring out a metal nozzle plate with a shear mode technology. There are print heads with metal nozzle plates. There are print heads with shear mode technology. But bringing these two together, <coughs> Seiko has been the first one. So I've not done anything. All the engineers in Japan, they have done all the work. And they have found out how these things work. So uh, it was a difficult task. It took almost two years for them to come up with this, uh, finding the right thickness of the nozzle plate, finding the right materials, finding the right glues. So it was a lot of work, but they were able to do it. So why a metal nozzle plate? Um, what does it help in? Um, one, it helps in selling. When people look at it, they're like, okay, metal, it looks more industrial. It think, people think that it will last longer. We don't know really if that's the case, but we have, we have <laughs> it's not in the market for so long, so we don't know that. That's the reason we don't know. But um, the, 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 that's the, let's say, the, the way it looks, you know, it looks better. Um, <laughs> The second thing where we have always been uh, asked is when people use these print heads in, in the industry and when they're cleaning it, if there is a plastic nozzle plate and the operators, you know, when they're cleaning, they, they put some, they don't use the right ways to clean it, then uh, the, metal no, the plastic nozzle plate would get scratched. And that's where a metal nozzle plate would be helpful. So that's something that we think also it will help in the durability and the long lasting nature of our print heads. The thing that it took a long time for us to develop was you know, to keep it backwards compatible. This print head can be directly replaced with an existing print head on the market. So you can just take out the old print head and put this print head back. This is something very important for our existing customers. In the ceramics market, for example, or in the corrugated industry, the machines are already existing. And you know, when, when people hear about this technology, they want to have it. So OEMs can go out there and say, OK, you know what? We can just take out the old print heads, put these, and they will work. That's uh, the backwards compatibility that we offer with this as well. The second part of the, I'm uh, going to be a little bit more uh, playful with my hands here to explain to you what exactly uh, what we have done here. So uh, there are 1,536 nozzles in our print head. In e there are four rows, so there are 384 rows. Uh, th sorry, there are 384 nozzles in each row. And each nozzle has two electrodes which are used to fire a drop out of the printhead. Now these, elect these two <coughs> piezo elements have each two electrodes. Now I'm putting all this back in, putting all these numbers and you know 15, 36 nozzles in this small piece of uh, equipment here, it all becomes quite small. So how we manufacture a printhead, you know, we, uh, we, we 
take a piezo element, we dice the channels in it, mm -hmm. and then we do a process of sputtering where we put the electrodes onto the piezo elements to make them drivable, to give an electronic signal to it and move the piezo so that a drop can be jetted out. Putting, this piezo, uh, putting these electrodes on these piezos is a little bit challenging. As you can imagine, you know, the sizes of these things is all in micron levels. So um, we have found an even better way in the last one year to apply these electrodes and that's what we're bringing out in the RCH printhead. What this helps to do is to have an even amount of energy transferred to the drops if it's in the last, dro uh, last uh, drops in on this end or over here or over here. So you, to get the even amount of energy to the drop where, wherever it is from the printhead, um, that's important when you want to print something wider when you're printing single pass, when you're printing unicolors. So it's important to get the same amount of, uh, of drop sizes and drop speeds coming out of the printhead. And that's what we're bringing in with the RCH printhead. Last but not the least is the fluid compatibility. Again, this is something that's um, simple to understand. Um, I was just explaining earlier that most of the inks are formulated with the substrate in mind, you know, because they have to work on the substrate, that's where they're gonna be landing for a longer time. But uh, the fluids also have to work with the entire inkjet system, that is with the ink system, with the, with the pumps, filters, and the printhead itself. And if there is an ink that does not work with the printhead, then uh, the ink has to be modified. So what we have done is we have chosen a bunch of inks from the field, gone back, and then found the right materials that would work for those inks, all the, way, all the way remembering that backwards compatibility is important. So the existing ink sets that have already been certified with our print heads would also work with the RCH print head. That was the idea. So it takes a lot of effort from the field. So you know, working with, we as sales guys were asked to go out and find out what's needed. You know, we had to go to the field and find out, okay, which UV inks are needed or what are the components in the UV inks that need to be tested for the future generation of the glues that are used in our print heads. And that's what we have done and found the right, uh, we, the, the guys in Japan, they, the engineers in Japan, they have done to find out the right uh, glues that would work for the, uh, for the print head. So that's the RCH uh, 1536 that we want to bring today. It's already in the market, so it took two years for us to, to develop this. It was something with a lot of interaction with the industry um, and we are now selling this in the M and the L version as well. So the two drop sizes, if you want to know more about it, you can come over to me at the booth outside and I'll, I'll tell you about it. So um, just going back on what I was saying earlier, innovation, uh, for, for us, it's important that we grow with the market, what the market demands, we listen to them and then we develop products for that. So in the year 2000s, when we developed our first bunch of print heads, um, it was the 510 binary at that time. It was just a, a 510 nozzles printing binary drops. <coughs> it was used in the wide format graphics and coding and marking industry. Then in the 2010s, when the ceramic industry picked up, when the textile and the decor industry picked up, that's when we developed uh, a grayscale printer, the 508 GS and the RC1536. And you know, this is all in a closed loop system with the industry. So uh, we, we have this thing that we want to always find the market, what they require, and then we go ahead and develop something for them. And now in the 2020s, we are uh, focusing on the corrugated industry quite a lot and the textile industry as well. So we're developing the new, uh, the new printers for them. So next step we're going is the 600 DPI and hopefully next year we should be out with this one as well. So a short presentation from my side. Thank you so much. Yeah.